Sean's been wearing this pack. Somebody way skinnier than me. <laughs> That's for sure. It's our first night in the tree here in Wyoming. And we are set up where we have two big bucks on camera. One's a big 10, huge 10 really. The other one's a big white eight. We think we saw the big 10 this morning, but we're hunting basically in between two water sources. We got a spring up top that trickles down all the way down to a pond down here, but it's kind of dried up in between. So really they have to water one of the two places. So we're basically right in the center of that. And we're in the draw that they got to use to get out to the big field out there. So we're hoping that they're going to come from our north out and out to the south. And I'm hoping one of these bucks shows up. There's a lot of deer on this ranch. We've been scouting. We took a little bit extra time to scout actually, rather than just jump in the tree. And hopefully that scouting's gonna pay off tonight. deer on this ranch that we know of, that we have pictures of, literally, has not been on camera in over a week. Yes. Oh. Brandon. Is that him still up there? That's the little buck. Yeah, that's him. Dude. How is he not dead? I can seriously... Uh, not even believe what just happened. The buck actually just got up. He got outside on us. I don't know how. I mean, we've watched the shot, replayed it. It looks perfect. You can see the exit with him walking off. It looks perfect. Maybe just a little bit back on the entry, but it came out. He was quartered away. It came right, right behind his shoulder, so. There's a buck right here. all of our stuff ready to get down out of the tree. And here comes the big eight that we were, one of the two bucks we were after. They both came in. We could have killed two bucks in one night. I'm glad we didn't come in here. Not last night. But it's a... We're gonna slip out. I'm gonna wrap around and just glass this field and see if I can see them. We're gonna get back out in the way so we don't bump them because that's the last thing we wanna do. In an area where there's more mountain lions per square mile than anywhere else in the country. I want to make sure we do the best to recover this deer before they do.
We're back here to the edge of the field where we stopped looking last night. We're gonna pick up the blood trail here. There's a little bit here, and then I marked some here with my arrow. A little bit, and he's heading this way across the pasture, looks like, so. You know, stick below, and there's, yeah, it's just dropping. Dripping out of both sides. He's, he's moving, you can tell. I mean, the drops of blood just fall through the blades of grass. And if it goes through them without hitting the blades, then you don't, you just can't see it. Here's some right here. Oh my God. He's right there. He didn't even cross the fence. He's right here. We stopped like 100 yards away last night. Oh my gosh, there he is. Yes. We literally stopped looking last night. 100 yards from here maybe, and he had to be dead because we would have seen him bedded here if he was still bedded with his head up. You know, I just, I. I hate to, to ever push him or ever be aggressive. I always want to leave him uh, to lay overnight, but up here is just a different story. There's so many mountain lions, so many coyotes. That I just want to push him, push him, push him, and not to lose him because he wasn't bleeding a whole lot. But I love this time of year. This is my favorite time of year to hunt by far. This has so much character, this buck. He's got a bunch of velvet still stuck to his antlers. I like this. I've never shot one that's kind of uh, in between, you know, half in velvet, half in hard horn incredible to catch up with the, the biggest buck we have on this ranch and then to have that big wide buck come right by as well that's going to be a hunt that's uh, going to go down in history as one of my best i love wyoming and i love early season you can't beat it